Hi all and welcome back to another F1 Clash video and a while ago we did a things you must know in F1 Clash and it got some great reaction from followers and also the wider community and we're back to give you a little bit of an update with some of the newest tips or ones that are more relevant to now than they were before because obviously the game changes a lot so first tip we are going to go into is the power-ups so power-ups have been in since the start of october for the new pit pass and they help a lot so you can see here you've got in the free and the premium you've got a 50 percent crate timers you've got coins times two we've got more crate timers there is more to come crate timers flags there's reputation in here as well. So there's a lot of power-ups that are our available to get. So what I want to tell you is that you want to use them to your advantage. I'll pop up the overlay now of exactly the times that are available for each one this month. And this tip is quite simple. We're all used to coming into the pit pass and claiming everything straight away. When you claim it straight away, it starts the timer, which you see in the top right, and you will then lose your time if you're not ready to play. My simple tip is to you now. Go into claim rewards and do not claim them if you are not ready to do so. Crate timer 50%. I've got no crates at the moment. There is no point, or I have, but I am full. So once I'm full, I will then activate the 50% timer to get my full use. I will then open with crates because you can see at the minute, eight books to open. If that is half, it's only four. So what I'll do is I'll keep cycling through crates, but don't use them. If you've got double coins for an hour, two hour, make sure you've got an hour or two hours, well, let's say, to actually race and make the most of the four coins. So you've got to be really smart when it comes to this. Obviously, double reputation. So when this goes on, Make sure that you're at a point where maybe you've got a couple of days that you can play the most. Use them to your advantage. If you use them at the start or you use them at the end, it's not going to matter because you are using them at some point. So really use them when you do require your power-ups. That's why I've got week 12 or number 12, sorry. I've got number 16. I've got number 19. And I've just claimed everything in between when I haven't been playing. So that's a good tip for you to take. The next tip that I will give you is this. I am in series nine, series 10 right now. A lot of people that I see in my Discord who are struggling with jewels have a setup similar to this. Now, not the parts, but the speed cornering. They pick speed over cornering now and that's where a lot of you can go wrong straight away you will equally find that you will get beat quite a lot when running a high speed setup the meta this year is cornering so this is my gp setup and my dual car setup it is as high cornering as i can possibly get that is your best setup this year is to get as much cornering with a bit of speed. So not going ridiculous on cornering, but maybe just keeping a bit of speed in there too, because you can now then use the meta strategy. That is one thing I want you to think about. Some of you who are just starting out will struggle because the cornering might not be as high, but once you level through, you will get a lot better car parts and you want to stick to cornering as well. Another one of my tips for you drivers i am in series 10 it is series 10 i am running a series 12 and a series 11 drivers at a very high level they are not needed for series 10 they are series 11 series 12 if i use these i increase my team score quite dramatically which might give you tougher matchups the biggest tip that i can give you is use a rare but use something that is not as high. Now look at this, Carlos Sainz. There is not that much difference, is there? For example, for Series 8 Max, 
eights and nines. If I assign him, I lose near enough 40 team score. Now that's quite big. Let's do another driver. I'm going to look at using, who should we use? I don't need to qualify at the front. So let's use Kevin Magnussen, for example. Series 7, he's well and truly good enough for Series 10. Let's add him in. And we're now we're down to 1522. And you might think, well, that means I've got worse drivers. But what you've got still is your best car setup. So what you'll find is your opponent might have better drivers because that's what really makes a difference on the team score. But your car will be superior, which means you are quicker in the race which means you can catch up your opponent quickly. So that is a big tip for Jules. Use your best car setup, but level down a little bit on the drivers and find a good balance. Now, it'll be up to you to find out your best driver combination, but you will honestly find a huge difference. And you, even if you get out qualified, you will find it quite astonishing how quickly you can come back at the field and win most of the jewels that are out there. Another tip that still counts is in GP. So you will notice there is three qualifying rounds to qualify for the weekend's action. Now, I am running champion. I qualified on Wednesday and you can see the difference in scores. Let's take me, for example, 2,400 flags. Let's take Miguel. 3,000. Someone else, there's a few around our level. There you go, 5,700, a lot different. Um, who else have we got? We've got 11,000 flags in this range as well. And you might be thinking, how the hell can you qualify against some flags that are players that are going to score so much more points? Well, it's easy. On Wednesday, when you enter GP, that Wednesday group is on a first come, first serve basis. Whenever you apply, you are grouped with people who apply at the same time. So it is very much luck about who you get added into. On the Thursday qualifying round two, you are grouped with similar people in your flag range or players who have only just entered GP. That means a very respectable score will see you through and it'll be a lot closer to the action. So Thursdays are your best attempt to qualify. Q3 on Friday, it really comes down to a bit of luck. It is anyone who hasn't entered GP or hasn't qualified yet. My update to you is always try to qualify all three rounds, but your best chance to qualify will be on a Thursday in Q2 when you are matched with mostly people within your flag range. Next up... We're talking GP results. And are you a person at the moment that tends to struggle in GP? Then there's probably a reason why. Look at the medals that I have got. Yes, there has been spend on the game. But there's a reason why. And that is because that green season high flags has been kept low. Obviously, the lower flags you are, the easier the groups are. If you are high in Series 12, you are competing with people with Series 12 assets, which means there's more people with the best car parts. So that is one thing you need to think about is don't rush through, stay a low series, try to enter the higher GPs, get lucky in rewards and make purchases, and you too can get some great results. Now, the way to drop flags is simple. You will see I am Series 10. I need 1,358 flags to get to the very next series. That is because I have chose to stay around the 2,400 flag range. You will notice how I drop flags. I simply forfeit in the lower series. So you can see I've 500, 400 flags there and 900 there. So there's around 1,400 flags and I will never. I have filled series 10. I can race Series 10 over and over again, unlocking the best assets up to that point, and I never gain a flag doing so. That keeps me in the same group, and what I can do is I can go and get lucky in rewards, I can go and get 
people like Leclerc, level six. We've got level seven Alonso by making purchases or getting GP rewards. So you will naturally find that the lower groups tend to be a little bit easier than the very, very high groups where they are more parts readily available. And the final thing we are going to look at. So with the current boost changes, you may have noticed that boosts now have plus 20, plus 25. It has really changed the way you work. Now, what I want you to think about is this. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you used to see me try and use Zhou Guan Yu. Now, Zhou Guan Yu has got very good qualifying at 90. So he used to start higher up in like P11, P13 for me a few weeks ago. But he used to get a really poor start because his race start was only 80. And we could only ever get a plus 10. So when you actually looked at it, he only had a 90, which meant he never really got a perfect start. He'd struggle off the line. He'd lose positions. My recommendation to you now with the boost changes is simple. Use a driver in your GP events with the highest qualifying position. If that's 90s, 95s, don't worry about race start. Even if he's got a poor race start like Zhou Guan Yu, you can go and use a boost like Cooper. That will give him max race start. Herald would give him too much, but capped at 99. There's Firework would still give him 95 race start. He's pretty much going to get a perfect race start at that point. So that is one thing you need to watch out for. You can now, this month, use a driver with a poor race start, good qualifying, and you can take advantage of the new boost change. You can now get perfect starts and start in the best position. So give them tips a go. Make sure you join my Discord. The link is down in the description below. They are a few key te tips. I know there's not much racing in this video, but they are some very, very valuable tips as to how you can improve your game and go and get some very good results on F1 Clash.